So what flute brands are actually good? Let's explore the answer today. Welcome to the Learn Flute Podcast, episode number 88. You can do it, and Rebecca will show you how, step by step all along the way. Introducing the The Learn Learn Flute Podcast. Podcast. Well, hi and welcome back. I'm Rebecca Fuller, and today we're going to do a little dive into the question I get all the time from you online flute learners, and that is of what flute brands are good? Well, this is a very good question. I think it deserves a little education and attention. Now, before we get to answering this exact question, I'd like to help you understand how the flute choosing process usually works inside a flute studio. Here, for example, when someone calls me about taking flute lessons, we discuss if they've already acquired a flute, and I'm always in hope that they haven't because it makes me very happy when I get to steer a new student to the highest quality of flute that they are able to purchase that will help ensure their success because There is the total opposite, that is, flutes, that make it really hard to learn and sound good on. And no one wants one of those, right? So I love helping make sure we get the right thing. Now in the online learning world, we have a lot of do-it-yourselfers, so you'll just have to take the information I give here and use it to further educate yourself so that you can do the best that you're able to. Now there are two things we're looking for basically when we are acquiring a new, let's say a student model flute. First, we're hoping the flute will be technically sound and manufactured of materials that will make it last a long time. And basically, we want what we're paying for. That's really not too much to ask for, is it? Well, you'd think, but there are a really lot of old flutes floating out there that people find and try to play. And it's Really hard to tell the difference between the old good ones and the old not good ones because some companies started out as really reputable brands back in the, say, 1960s, for example, and then changed their manufacturing process or venue or design, for example. Maybe they started manufacturing in factories overseas, which resulted in lower quality grade of metal or less precision in following the exact design, etc. Now, this is just something to think about and kind of generalizing here. Or some companies originally had a real master technician, or several of them that would check through the instruments before they were sent out to stores to minimize defective instruments from getting through the line. Now, this is a really good thing, and not all companies do it anymore, unfortunately. The flutes are stamped out in a factory with machines, boxed up and sent right out to stores and customers without being checked. Hmm, it happens. Now, since the flute is such an intricate instrument, honestly, it has to be manufactured correctly or the instrument simply will not last. Parts will fall off, get bent, prematurely break, or, and if it's made of cheap material like soft, low quality silver or nickel, it will not be easy to put back together. That sounds kind of dramatic. (laughs) It definitely sounds that way right now as I say it anyway. Now no worries, there are plenty of really good flutes out there for you to make your choice from. It's just nice to know that a little education will go a long ways, don't you think? Now the second thing we're wanting is a flute that is designed well in the first place so that we can get good sound on it, right? Since the actual sound of an instrument is the whole point of playing it in the first place, this should make total sense. Now each maker wants nowadays, it seems like, to put their own spin on the flute design and that's why there are so many brands nowadays. It's crazy how many there are. Years ago, there were a number of core companies that made the flutes, and that's really all we used to know about. Now, with technology and sales being global, new instrument brands are popping up constantly. Now, I attend the National Flute Convention often, and part of what I do while I'm there is spend an entire day on the sales floor checking out the new flutes and meeting the flute makers. I oftentimes am surprised at some of the new designs, but 
I keep an open mind because you never know when the next new best thing is going to happen. Well, some makers are kind of experimenting right now with the shape of the tone hole. You know, the one that you actually blow into on the head joint. Some of them are just strange and I've tried them and I can't get a good sound out of many of them to save my life. So I'm not sure where some of them are going with it, but good luck to them if they think a perfectly square tone hole is gonna work, then go for it. Maybe it will work for somebody. I don't know. Not for me right now, anyway. Now, some flutes have a design that you can play pretty well, meaning that they feel good and you can get really nice, clear tone on, but they have another problem that stops you from getting real success, like it, they seem to be super out of tune. As, no matter what you do or what level of a player you are, or they tend to get leaks really often in the pads and the keys, like monthly even on some of them. So actually that reminds me, let me tell you of a quick story about my first introduction to flute playing. Now, I've already told some of this story before, so I'll make this brief, but I found my first flute. Yeah, literally I found it. It was in the root cellar of my grandpa's old home. You know, where you store your potatoes under the house. It's dark, kind of damp, full of dirt and spiders, and a totally interesting place to find a musical instrument. Well, anyway, I was sure happy about it, and I figured it was a sign that I was to learn how to play the flute. So I did. I had no idea if it was a good brand or not, nor did I think there was even such thing as a bad brand of flute. A flute was a flute to me. I never even considered any of these other things. Well, it's not really something that runs through a 10-year-old's mind anyway. Well, that flute and I did a few good things for at least a couple of years. I did my best with it, and it sure was trying for me. I guess I'll have to go ahead and divulge what brand it was since we're talking about brands today. Um, it was a Bundy. Now, I haven't actually set eyes on a Bundy for quite some time now, but I know they're not on my list of quality flutes. Now, the problems I had with the Bundy was mostly due to the type of pads that were used on it. Now, I think that I had a new leak every other week on that thing, at least. The pads would get really puffed up and crack constantly. And you have to realize this was back in the early 80s and I, I wasn't really even rough on it. In fact, I babied that thing as much as I knew how to because I wanted so badly to be good at flute playing. But my poor parents had to take it to the repairman quite often, which was far away from our home, and do everything they could to get it to play for me again. We'd revive it, kind of give it whatever it needed, and I'd be off again for a few more weeks. Now that's kind of all I could squeak out of this instrument, was just a few weeks at a time before something would literally fall off of it, or a pad would need replacing again. It was just simply a lower quality instrument in so many ways, but I loved that thing and it gave me my start, so I will always be grateful. My next three flutes were in the normal band brand range, I could say. Again, not much higher of a step from that Bundy, but my second flute was a little better because it had been purchased brand new, so that always helps. And now that I've been teaching for 30 some odd years, I, I think I've seen them all actually. Quality does matter when focusing on aspects and traits such as longevity and playability and, but man, if I hadn't had that Bundy, I would never have learned how to play the flute in the first place because it was not something that was actually going to happen for me. I had three older siblings, two younger ones, and I lived way out in the country, and my older sister had first dibs on learning how to play the flute. That's just how it went in my family. Well, for a while, anyway. So, if you come across the gift of an instrument from a friend or family member or possibly gotten a great deal at a thrift store or even an antique shop, 
Don't diss it. It's awesome. And you should use it. Use that flute to learn and grow on. Be proud of it for being, you know, the little flute that could. It could try anyway. And then when you feel you're in the position to spend a few hundred dollars on a new one, you can find the most reputable brand above, I would say at least above the 300 mark, $300 mark and on up. And of course, we can go as high as you can even imagine as far as money goes and instruments. Now, I've made an entire video series on this very subject that you can make your way to and find it on, the, on my webpage. It's learnfluteonline.com forward slash how dash to dash choose dash a dash flute. How to choose a flute. And since there are spaces there, each one has to be a dash. So that's learnflutonline.com forward slash how dash to dash choose dash a dash flute. Anyway, I tried to be pretty thorough there in my discussion, and there are a lot of videos there that go even deeper into this exact subject. There's, because there's a lot to answering someone's question of what flute brands are good. You know, just to give you an idea of the different qualities and levels of flutes, there are, let's start at the bottom, there are the lowest quality of make of flutes that are usually designed and manufactured in China. Now I say usually. Not always, which I, I used to really poo-poo on those a bit because the quality was so low. But guess what? It seems they're now competing with each other and we're seeing some better instruments. Yay! That means more affordable instruments for the whole world, which is cool. And I want everyone to be able to play the flute. We can have a big global flute party one day. And speaking of the word global, I should mention that different brands are available in different countries. So since you're all from around the world listening to this, that's why it's really hard for me to give a specific list today right here. Now the next level of flutes is the band brands, as I call them. And they're marketed to the elementary and junior high or high schools the most. And we see them everywhere. Everywhere. Now, don't be tricked. Just because the brand has been around, brand name anyway, has been around forever and is good at marketing doesn't mean their flutes are any good. For example, one brand in particular that I'm thinking of is very good at making saxophones. Very, very good. And they are the highest quality of saxophones you can even get. But their flutes... They are left wanting. I have troubles with every single one. So, whew, it's tricky. Now, moving up from the band brand level, we go into the more quality instruments, even st still on the student level, which, of course, also come with a more quality price tag. <laughs> now, you know what I mean, right? These flutes are more precision made and are always checked over by a good, solid technician who knows what they're doing before it's even sent out to be used. Now these flutes generally will sound the best and last the longest for basically every learning student as long as the student has proper care and playing instructions. Whoa, more on that later. All sorts of things are popping in my head now. I'd love to tell you, but I think we probably better leave these little sparks of education with you now in hopes that your next flute selection will be purposeful and leave you feeling confident that you have what you are looking for. Well, that's all for this episode. I would love to hear what you have to say about this subject. Please leave a comment in the appropriate place. And of course, always remember to hop yourself over to learnfluteonline.com and take yourself an online flute lesson today. They're there just for you. Bye now. Thanks for listening today. Remember that this is where people of all ages, such as you, 
can come, learn, and play the musical instrument flute in an easy-to-follow organized manner and in the privacy and comfort of your own home on your own schedule. 